Hi, good evening. Um, it's Gemma here. Um, it's just a quick one to share with you seven reasons why you should read or at the very least, least listen to the book of Revelation. Revelation is a book that for some reason, unfortunately, is not spoken about a lot in churches. Um, it's not read, it's not shared, it's not taught. Not that it's not at all, I don't mean it that way, but people barely touch it. People are scared of it, people feel it's too full of contro controversy, people wonder about symbolism, they're not sure whether it's literal or, and so on. Um, but the thing is, unless people read it, people will not see what's inside. And I believe the Lord wants us to read it. He says it, he makes it clear, and he also, um, well, he makes it very clear that he wants us to read it. So here's seven reasons why you need to read or at the very least listen to the book of Revelation. Thankfully, we're in an age where computers, mobile phones, spouses, siblings, children, nephews, nieces, parents have the capacity to read to you. So it's not just a case of, okay, you have to pick the book and read. Somebody else could read it to you as well. An app could read it to you as well. So here are seven reasons why you need to listen to or read the book of Revelation. Number one is found in the first verse of the first chapter. The book of Revelation, the word revelation is the word apocalypse, which means an unveiling, a revelation. It's not the word to mean um, doom and gloom, which is how people paint things today, but it's the word an unveiling, a revelation, a revealing of sorts. So it says in the, the very first reason is the apocalypse is given by God to Jesus for his servants, you and I. The apocalypse is given by God to Jesus for us, so we know things which so we know the things which will quickly come to pass. Revelation chapter one verse one says the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So that's the first reason. God gave it to Jesus for you and I. Second reason, a blessing is promised to the reader and hearer of the book. This is found in verse 3 of the same first chapter. It says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. The only way in which you are going to keep the things which are written in this prophecy is that you hear it or you read it. You need to be acquainted with it in order to keep it. Without being acquainted with it, you can't keep it. But God says, blessed is he that reads and he that hears the words of this prophecy. I mean, he, she, they, them. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. The third reason is found in verse 11. The letters are written to the seven churches, but these letters are instructive not just to the seven churches that existed then, but to the churches that exist today and us as individuals. If you read the letters of, to the churches, in particular in Revelation 2 and 3, one of the things you see Jesus saying consistently, almost at the end of every letter, in fact, at the end of every letter, he would say things along the lines of, he that has an ear, let him hear the things which, God, the, which the Spirit saith unto the churches. Let he that has an ear, let me give you an example. In, in Revelation 2, in verse um, so this is a church, the letter of the church to Ephesus. It says in verse 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He that has an ear, let him hear the things, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, Keep in mind, the ear is not just this. Anyone who studied biology knows by now that the ear is not just a pinner, but what is on the inside that you can hear. You have the hearing faculties. The fourth reason is we see in verse in chapter 7 in verse 14, as well as Revelation chapter 20 in verse 4, we see what appears to be the raptured and the tribulation saints in that order. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14 and Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, we see what appears to be the raptured and tribulation saints in that order. So take some time to read that. 
in, in the, the fifth reason, we see the period of Jacob's troubles. Now, Jeremiah chapter 30 tells us about the time of Jacob's troubles. Um, th this same time is described in Daniel chapter 9 in verse 26, in, sorry, in particular in verse 27, as the as the 70th week of Daniel. Now, the week there is the week of years. So it's seven years. It's a seven-year period. It's not talking about a week of days, as most people assume for some reason that I'm saying. I mean, no, okay, not for some reason. In the West, in general, when we hear the word week, we think about days, seven days. But when the Bible uses the word week, in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, in verses 24 to 27, it's talking about years, weeks of years. And so in Revelation chapter 6, all the way to down to chapter 18, we see the period described by Jeremiah in Jeremiah 30 as a, as a time of Jacob's troubles, explained in great detail. And we see a bit of it in the book of Zechariah as well. So we see the period of Jacob's troubles explained or told us in advance in Revelation chapters 6 all the way to 18. The sixth reason why you need to read the book of Daniel, uh, the book of Revelation is the wedding of the Lamb is mentioned in Revelation chapter 19, in particular in verse 9. If you take a look, you'll find the wedding of the Lamb is mentioned. That's quite interesting when you consider that many people believe that the, 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 um, the rapture is post-trib, which is odd because the, the wedding, the Bible tells us in Revelation 19, takes place in heaven. If it takes place in heaven and Jesus Christ comes back from heaven to earth to defeat the enemies of Israel, to end the tribulation, how is the wedding post-tribulation? Think about it. Anyway, the Bible does mention the wedding of the Lamb being in Revelation chapter 19, in verse 9. Lastly, in the seventh reason why... It is beneficial to read or listen to the book of Revelation as we see Jesus come back to carry out judgment and begin his kingdom from Revelation 19 all in verse 11 all the way to 21. And even beyond, um, we, we see how that Jesus comes back, deals very swiftly with the enemies of Israel, with all his enemies and begins his kingdom. The kingdom that is mentioned in, in Daniel chapter 2 as being the stone that comes from that comes and destroys the statue of Daniel. In, in Daniel chapter 2, you see there in Isaiah 61, the Bible talks about him coming for judgment. And this is then, you know, unveiled in greater detail in Revelation chapter 19. You'll see this as well in Zechariah chapter 14. So in summary, I'll just say this again. There's many reasons why God wants you to read the book of Revelation. It's it's plain, it's simple, it's not as difficult as many people make it out to be. You should read it. And I'll tell you this, the more you read it, the more things become clearer to you. So again, I'll repeat the seven reasons very quickly this time. Reason number one, the apocalypse or the revelation is given by God to Jesus for us. His servants, you and I. That's in Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Secondly, there is a blessing that is reserved for those who read it, those who hear it, and those who keep the word. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Third reason, the letters to the seven churches are instructive for us as believers and as the churches. Revelation chapter 1 verse 11 and the entirety of chapters 2 and 3. Fourth reason, we see what appears to be raptured and tribulation saints in Revelation 7 in verse 14 and Revelation 20 in verse 4, respectively. Fifth reason, we see the period of Jacob's troubles painted clearly, very clearly in Revelation 6 all the way to chapter 18. And then sixth reason, the wedding of the Lamb is mentioned in Revelation 19 verse 9. And the seventh reason, we see Jesus coming back to carry out judgment as the king and begin his kingdom, Revelation 19 verses 11 to 21. Honorable mentions goes to um, how that we see the bride coming out of heaven as a, a, a or sorry, we, we see the body of Christ coming out of heaven as, or, or the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband and so on and so forth. I wanted to keep this short, so I'm going to keep this short. There's many reasons to read the book of Revelation amongst these seven that I've mentioned. Take some time, go read it. Don't follow the people who think the book is too complicated. Don't follow the people who think the book is too controversial. God bless you.